Hi, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Muhammad Shahzad and I'm working as a guest professor at the Department of Data Science and Earth Observation at Technical University of Munich. And the, the title of my talk, which I'm going to give is basically self-supervised learning, tapping the power of unlabeled data. So this is the outline of my talk. So I will talk about, first I will introduce the supervised learning and then from there on, I will build foundations of self-supervised learning, that what self-supervised learning is. Then I will introduce you the general framework or general pipeline of how self-supervised learning works. And also discuss some evaluation strategies, how we uh, evaluate self-supervised learning methods. Then I will show you, sh showcase you some few examples of the pretext tasks, which are actually needed to train uh, machine, machine learning models in a self-supervised manner. Then we will talk about contrastive representation learning. And here I have listed like a broad taxonomy of contrastive representation learning methods. I won't go into details of these methods, but one of them, for example, the CIB CLR, I will briefly go into more details in that. So what is supervised learning? So supervised learning is actually learning with labeled data. And this is actually perhaps the type that we refer to when we talk about machine learning. And here the approach is that we collect large data set, manually label the data set, and train the model using that training, training data. And what, do, you, what I, do I mean by these labels or the labeled data set is something, for example, on the left, you could see the images, but this could be your, like, your in, input data. And the labels could be, for example, the classification labels. For example, for each image, you know, okay, the, this image is, belongs to building, this image belongs to roads, or this image belongs to vegetation. But of course, this, uh, this is the one particular type of labels belonging to a particular class of machine learning, a particular application of machine learning, which is classification. For example, but there are also many other uh, applications of machine learning, for example, in the detection case, the labels would not only be contain the classification label, the name of the object, main, op main object within the area of interest, but also the box coordinates. And similarly, if we talk about segmentation, then the label basically becomes the mask like this. So we have like in the, in the, on, the, on the top, you could see on the left side, there is an image of, of a building from the top view. And then the label is basically a binary mask where we have all the pixels of value one or our value is in pink, or shown in pink or purple, uh, that belongs to buildings and the rest all is in black. So this is kind of the, the label which, which I'm talking about. And this is actually very good for, for transfer learning. So where we could take this learned feature representations and or like uh, to others, smaller domain specific tasks, uh, for example, classification or object detection, or for example, we could train a model for classification and use those feature vectors or in the, in the last layer to, uh, to train something for segmentation or for object detection as well. So basically this is referred to as transfer learning. So here the idea is in self-supervised learning, we kind of want to make these feature representations quite more robust, and with, but without using the label data. So this is all what is all about uh, self-supervised learning. So in self-supervised learning, we do not use the labels directly so essentially, this is representation learning with unlabeled data, but we somehow learn useful feature representations from this unlabeled data, but the learnings here still takes place via supervised learning objectives, for example, classification or regression. So this is like the general, I outline how the self-supervised learning looks like. So we have lots of unlabeled data, then we have a machine learning model, and we somehow do some, some tricks to use unlabeled data and basically build a robust or like build a robust representation of the features. And so somehow after a few tra training epochs or something, we are able to gener generali generalize uh, some features which are, very, which are good enough. So how can we do this? So we can do this by solving for free for pretext tasks in a supervised manner. And labels for these pretext tasks are self-generated in an automatic manner. So I give you an example in the uh, next slide what this pretext task would be. 
For example, this is this is an example which, where I show a pretext task of rotation. So here we could actually so we could take the same image and rotate it in different different uh, 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 to different degrees, and then use this rotation angles as our objective. And so basically, we could simply train a model to predict the rotation angle of the rotated images. And if we keep on doing this, then we basically we are able to learn good features. So what this means is, I show you this by giving you this uh, example in the next slide. So let's say have we have an in this image X, and on then we could basically create four uh, degrees of rotation out of this image. For example, zero degrees, this would be one image. Then 90 degrees would rotate this image to 90 degrees. This would be another image. Then we rotate it to 180 degrees. This would become a third image. Then we rotate it to 270 degrees. That would become the fourth image. And this here, this Y represents the label. So Y equals to zero means that this is the, all the images with zero degree rotation. Y equals to one means all the images with 90 degree rotation. Y equals to two means all the images with 180 and similarly to uh, Y equals three means the 270 degree rotated images. And X always remains the same. So the idea here is that we uh, Y is kind of a pseudo label, which we have directly generated from the existing data. Here we are not like concerned about the exact uh, label of this image. For example, if this is a bird image or what, but rather we have from this image, we have created some pseudo labels. And we would use these pseudo labels to actually train our model. For example, like now we feed this, these, um, um, uh, these images to a convolutional neural network, our model, and, as, and estimate basically the which rotation, if, if the image is rotated or not, or if it is, if it is then how, but how, how degree. So if it is rotated by zero degree, if it is rotated by 90 degrees, this is our, our, this is our objective function. And if we keep on doing this, if we keep on doing this, train, the, train our machine learning model, somehow the, the, the model, this convolutional neural network, network model is able to produce very good f features, which are, uh, which are useful for many downstream applications, which I will also explain in a minute. So here, we usually don't care about the performance of the self-supervised learning task. This is actually important. For example, we really don't care if the model learns to predict image rotation perfectly. So this is not our task, but, 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 but by doing so, we are able to, uh, the model is able to learn good features, actually. 